So you won the lottery, and you're wondering what Nintendo game should I get? Well, I am the Game Collector, and this is Second Opinion Games. And today I count down the top 10 NES games that are expensive and worth playing. Does Metal Storm deserve to be on this list? Well, heck yeah, but I forgot about it completely. Sorry. Second Opinion Games. Number 10, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. Launching in the same window with the Super Nintendo version and the Genesis one, well, this one kinda got lost in the shuffle. More like got kicked right the heck out the door. That's why no one bought it. But you know what? This is the best one-on-one -on -one fighting game for the original NES. About halfway through the match, a murder ball drops in where it is a complete game changer. Each of the Ninja Turtles are here without their weapons, and there are tons of bosses galore. The balancing really isn't here at all, but the gameplay is still fun and crisp. If you want a great one-on-one -on -one fighter, well then this one is for you at the low, low price of $118. Number 9, Bubble Bath Babes, the only unlicensed game here, and it sometimes runs for up to a thousand dollars. This is really expensive, and the, from my best understanding, it's because you play as a puzzle game where the pieces move from the bottom to the top. Now this is completely mind-blowing. The music here is sort of average, and it's one of those put four pieces in a row and you watch the bubbles burst type of games. Now one button rotates your shapes around and the other one just moves the colors and I can't put my finger on it but there's something about this game that just keeps drawing me in and I just can't stop playing it even if it is more of an average puzzle and I would definitely recommend buying the reproduction card of this just because I like playing games on original hardware doesn't mean I have to have the original game. Number 8, Battletoads and Double Dragon. The best of both worlds colliding together, kind of like peanut butter and chocolate, only this time it's freaking frogs and badass dudes. Even appearing in space, how does Billy even freaking breathe? But I do not care because this is one of the best all-out beat-em-ups on the entire console and maybe even including the Super Nintendo as well. They even have the speeder bike levels in here, only this time it's a bit more playable. Graphically, this is an amazing game for the console, and it better be for the $80 that you'll pay for a loose card. Number 7, RC Pro-Am 2. Driving games on the NES are usually a dime a dozen, and with their traditional stance of driving around the track to earn more money, to power up your vehicle, and then do it all over again, well, this one was bound to be left in the dust. Nowadays, it runs about $80, which is just a small price to pay to be able to power up your car with freaking guns to shoot the power-ups out of the other cars. This game really isn't that bad, and should really deserve a second look. Number 6. 
Number six, Godzilla 2 War of Monsters. Think of this as Advance Wars mixed in with a little bit of Godzilla and friends. Not only do you have Godzilla himself to worry about, but there's also huge monsters lurking in the shadows just waiting to destroy your towns. And you might have them outnumbered, but they certainly have more firepower at their dispense. Also, their energy recharges in between days. Now, this might be a relatively slow-paced game and certainly deserves to be remade for today, but it's still a darn good one if you have the time to play it, as well as the $90 you would need to reserve a copy. Number 5, Rockin' Cats. Every good platformer has to have a great gimmick, and this one has it in spades. Your main weapon can be used as a pogo stick a la Scrooge McDuck, and also can act kind of like Bionic Commando as you swing around and make it to new heights. Every platforming stage is perfectly laid out and made terrifically well. The music here is also pretty darn good. Boss battles are creative and inventive, and you can start on any level you want from the very start, and each level has its own storyline, usually revolving around saving your girlfriend. And for the $110 they charge you for it, you might be wondering, how did they misspell the word cats? Number 4, Bonk's Adventure. Now, if you don't know Bonk's Adventure, it was originally a TurboGrafx-16 game, now dumbed down for the NES. And they did a pretty darn good job, or at least as good as they possibly could have done, given the hardware limitations. Now, why does this game sell for $450 now? Well, part of it is scalpers, and another reason is, for some stupid reason, they only sent copies to certain major cities. Meaning that most of the country was a barren wasteland for Bonk, even though we craved it and we all wanted it. This was a really dumb idea. And as if you can't tell, I absolutely love Bonk, which is really frustrating for me because I had to search high and low to get my copy back in the day. And even now, I will not part with it for even close to that amount. Number three, Little Samson. At $800, scalpers are the main reason why this game sells so much. On top of it, it's one of the best platformers there ever was. Sort of playing like Mega Man, only better in my opinion. After the first couple tutorial levels, you could switch back and forth between any of your characters at any time. Little Samson himself is really good, but I like playing as the mouse who sort of sets bombs Metroid style. Or as the giant golem who takes down bosses really fast if you really know how to play him. He sort of moves like Simon Belmont with a really slow, deliberate movements and can also walk on spikes. There's even a dragon in this game that can fly through the levels if you could tap the jump button fast enough. This is a terrific game from start to finish and most people will never play it because of the high price. So make sure you pick up a reproduction card as soon as you can. Number two, Gunnack. At $200, Gunnack pushes the console to its absolute limits. There is very little slowdown, even though there are tons of sprites on screen at any given time, including your own shots. Now you can power up in many different ways, and that's because power-ups are continuously being shoved down your throat, with tons of different weapon upgrades and ship upgrades, and every time you get hit, you lose a little bit of that, but chances are you'll never get hit because you keep on upgrading non-freaking stop. 
up. This is one of the most intense shoot 'em ups on this system, if not the very best one. And it plays just like Blazing Lasers. You know, that freaking classic TurboGrafx game. What's up with TurboGrafx games being the best games for this freaking system? I don't know, but you have to have Gunnack immediately because I can only think of one game that's worth the high price even more than it. Number one, Dragon Fighter. Oh, it's just a normal action platformer game where all of a sudden you can choose when to turn into a freaking dragon and then it becomes a shoot 'em up. And you don't just have that one type of dragon to turn into, you have at least three different dragons. Now the very first level is super tough because you have very little life. As you play through and beat more levels, you get more life, means the game gets easier and far playable as you play through it, which is incredible. At $300, this hidden gem is kind of like finding diamonds in your freaking sofa. It is so good and amazing, and the bosses are terrific. The gameplay is tight. There's respawning enemies, but luckily that fills up your dragon bar, which then makes you unleash power and rage against even the hardest bosses in this game, and you have yourself one terrific, expensive game worth playing for the NES. But that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, I had a great time making it, and this was not a list of the most expensive games for the console. This is more what ones are pricey and completely worth playing. I myself prefer playing on original hardware, so I like to have some reproduction cards if I couldn't pick up these games dirt cheap back in the day. Luckily, I managed to get Dragon Fighter in my collection a long time ago and didn't even realize it until just a couple of weeks ago, which inspired this whole video. Making it one heck of a hidden gem. So I want to know what games are underrated on the NES or what hidden gems are still out there that I have not yet found. Please let me know in the comment box down below and until later I will see you again guys.